Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about basic plugin architecture. So many of you are looking at these tutorials to learn how to build an audio plugin. And it's important that you understand the differences of where you want to do your audio processing at versus where you want to actually try to draw your user interface and how to connect those things eventually. So this is going to be a quick tutorial. It's going to be a very basic tutorial where I give you an overview of what sort of source files you get when you actually build a, uh, a Juice plugin for the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a basic plugin template. So we could just do that by clicking on basic under plugin and I'll just call this test. And now we will create the project by hitting our button in the bottom right hand corner. And now we'll just save this to the desktop. And this will give us our source files. So as we see, we have four separate four source files here. And there, uh, there's the plugin processor and the plugin editor. So I'm just going to open this up in IDE by clicking this center button here. And this will open us up in Xcode. And this is taking a second. Okay, but here we are. I'm just going to minimize these. We just want to look at our source files. So as I said, when you create a audio plugin template, you're going to have these four source files. And as you can see, there are two separate parts, basically. There's the plugin processor and the plugin editor. So the, the, the basic is that the plugin processor is where all of the audio processing is going to be done. So you can think of this as the actual data and the actual audio that's actually happening to your audio plugin. The plugin editor is what the user sees. So it's the actual user interface, the buttons, dials, and widgets that the user is able to interact with that's going to eventually connect with that data that's happening in the plugin processor. So there are a couple important functions in the processor and the editor, and I'm just going to walk you through those now. So if we go to our plugin processor.cpp, and if you're first starting off with Juice, this could be a little bit daunting uh, to take a look at, but I will break down uh, the most important functions here for you. Uh, I've been using Juice for a couple of years now, and to be honest, outside of these functions that I'm going to point out to you and creating my own, there's not a whole lot else that I actually interact with. So the first thing that you're going to see is your constructor. So uh, if you know about C++ basics, you know that the constructor is something that instantiates when you first create an object. So when you first create the plugin, this plugin processor is going to call and this will call the constructor that you see here in front of you. And that's going to instantiate uh, all of your uh, all of the stuff that needs to happen when your plugin first starts up. Right below that, you have the destructor. We know it's the destructor because we see that tilde right in front of our class name, which is test audio processor. So that's the destructor. A lot of times, uh, or sometimes, you have certain things that you need to shut down safely and uh, destroy safely when you're uh, actually. Uh, deleting a plugin or shutting it down somehow and that would happen in the destructor so now scrolling down a little bit further like i said a lot of these functions i don't actually even mess with so the next function that we want to take a look at is on line 96 where we have prepare to play so prepare to play is something that calls um anytime that the user is getting ready, get preparing to play audio through the plugin. So when you hit the space bar and you're about to start playing audio through the plugin, prepare to play calls before the audio actually starts to play. And this is a place where normally if you have some sort of DSP process that's happening, normally you have to pass the sample rate to the DSP process so it knows how it needs to actually process process the audio. Uh, you also might want to clear uh, junk values out of your DSP processes and things like that. And that happens in prepare to play. Scrolling down a little bit further, we come to the main kind of meat of the audio processor, which is what's called the process block. Some people may call it the audio callback. Uh, so this is where the actual audio comes in and exits out of your plugin. And as you can see, there's a lot of boilerplate that 
goes into depth in explaining this. And there are a lot of different rules in terms of, uh, so, so the process block is a special type of function that's meant to uh, be running all the time really fast. And there are certain things that you can do in the process block and there are certain things that you cannot do in the process block. And that's something that we will talk about a little bit more in detail further down the road. But the thing to know for the moment is that the process block is where the audio actually happens, where it actually routes in to your plugin and actually does the, the processing, the changing of the audio, and it actually sends it back out. So that is actually the, those are actually the main functions in the plugin processor. I guess these two one, these two uh, are also pertinent. So you got get set, get state information. So get state information is something that we'll go through a little bit further down the road. And that's when you're actually loading your plugin. So if you have a project and you've uh, been working with your plugin, changing some parameters, you shut it down. And now you want to bring it back up and you want it to have the saved state of information load back into the plugin, set the parameters where you left, last left them, then that would happen in get state information. So it's getting the state information that you saved and loading it back into the plugin to set the parameters where you want them to be. Then right below that, you have set state information, which I imagine you'll be able to figure out is where we actually set the state. So that's how it actually saves the actual state of the plugin before the project actually shuts down so that when you're, when you're bringing your plugin back up, that you're actually able to load it in, in the state that you saved it in. So those are the most important uh, functions and most important aspects of the plugin processor. So as I was saying before, the most important thing to understand about the plugin processor is that is where the actual data happens. So this is not anything visual. This is the actual stuff that happens under the hood so the data of the plugin, the actual number crunching, the audio processing, and so on. Now you have the plugin editor. And the plugin editor, so we think that we have this, uh, these pieces of data that are doing some sort of audio processing, these numbers that are crunching. And now we might have uh, uh, a piece of information that we have in the plugin processor. And we want the user to be able to modify that. And usually we would do that with something visual like a user interface. So if there was a parameter that the user could turn on, then we might have a button there that when they click, uh, the button lights up and it turns on. And then in the plugin processor, there might be maybe a Boolean that turns into a one. And then when they click it again and it turns off, that Boolean might turn into a zero. So Basically, you have these user parts that are connecting to the data that's happening on the back end. And so the plugin editor is where all of the visual aspects actually happen. How big the window is, uh, what sort of controls does the user, is the user able to modify? Uh, combo boxes where you're able to select what different types of distortion that you have in a plugin. Uh, sliders where you're able to control the gain of uh, of a signal and things like that. So all of that happens in the plugin editor. And here you can see that we have a lot less functions that we, uh, we have here. So once again, we have the constructor and here you can see we've set the size to 400, 300. So once again, constructor is something that first calls when the plugin is instantiated and uh, that this is something that only calls on initialization. Then you have the destructor, which I told you about before, but this is for the editor. So this is when the editor shuts down, any sort of objects that need to be safely destroyed happen in the destructor. Then you have the paint function. The paint function you can think of as what is actually happening in this component. So we've gone over what the component class is. So plugin editor is a component and paint is what is actually happening in this very component that we're actually talking about right now? What color is it? What size is it? Uh, not what size is it? Uh, that happens in the constructor, but what color is it? Does it have uh, text on it? Things like that. So that is happening in the paint function. And then resized is where you would set the coordinates for any sort of child components. So the plugin editor, you can think of as the parent component or the canvas upon which you would paint other 
uh, components, child components. And we set the size of those and where we want those in our resized function. And that's really it. So those are, those are the uh, basic aspects of plugin architecture that you really need to know at when you're first starting to build a plugin. And as I said, one of the big things that we're going to be talking about in the next few tutorials is how we actually make a connection between the, what the user sees and the parameters that they're actually able to adjust and the data that uh, lies underneath that's actually doing the audio pro processing. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next couple tutorials. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, uh, please give it a like and subscribe and I will see you next time.